Welcome to Light Channel again and welcome to the second part of the study where we are going to uh, discuss a little bit about what it means to be a Christian fundamentalist. And welcome again, Jay, as our guest here in, in our studio in, uh, Thank you. in Denmark. And I would like to, to start um, with one of the last slides that we had in our previous presentation, maybe for some of our viewers that doesn't didn't see the, the first presentation or what we're talking about. And we were talking about um, how the world sees mm -hmm. a fundamentalist today, and especially a Christian uh, fundamentalist. And I have here on this slide here, um, I tried to make a schematic about the meaning of the term, which originally uh, was explained in the 1920s as a Christian Protestant expression of beliefs, that the meaning has been twisted through the years and today has become to mean something completely different, mm. yes. which is a terrorist, uh, means mm -hmm. somebody that is promoting violence, uh, oppressing uh, women, mm. uh, molesting children, uh, a, a jihadi person, and everything which can be loaded uh, with something negative, mm. it has been uh, twisted and applied to the term uh, fundamentalist. Yeah. And I believe, I strongly believe that we as Christians, we have something to say as a Protestant Christian. Um, we do not agree with the understanding of the term today, fundamentalist, especially fundamentalist Christian. We do not agree with the picture that the media uh, is trying to, well, has done a pretty good job uh, to kind of interfere and twist uh, the real meaning of, of uh, this word. Um, so today, in, in the second part, I would like to, uh, to cover a little bit. We're just going to scratch the surface because this is, uh, uh, this is a great subject. There, mm. there are a lot of uh, aspects and angles we can take in our presentation, but I would like to repeat for some people and re- address the issue in a sense to go back and see what is really a biblical fundamentalist. And um, I have one definition here uh, on this slide here, number uh, uh, 42. Uh, what is a biblical fundamentalist? Uh, a definition that I found here is that a fundamentalist is one who believes everything that is clearly thought and obeys everything that is clearly commanded in the scriptures. Uh, in Maine, a fundamentalist, in the main, a fundamentalist is about mm. fundamentalism, is about biblical uh, integrity in belief and practice. Um, I found this definition to be uh, quite interesting uh, and, and right to the point. Uh, and especially the term uh, which I highlighted in red, biblical integrity mm, yes. in belief and practice, because mm -hmm. these, these two things go uh, hand in hand. Yeah, faith and works. Exactly. <clears throat> this is what it, uh, it, it means here. And yes. Biblical integrity means that, uh, in your view, what, what would you say, uh, what does it mean in your view? Yes, well, the Bible, integrity... I would say it, uh, to me, it means believing in the Bible and upholding the value, the beauty of the mm. scriptures. And the, the, one of the reasons which I believe people outside of the Christian communities uh, have been so easily, and I, would, I have to, to use the term manipulated, mm. into yes. believing the actual uh, understanding of the word fundamentalist today is because they don't know the Bible. And yes. it's, it, it makes it impossible if you don't have a belief in a God, a God entity, mm -hmm. and if you do not believe that the Bible is God's word, you will not be able to understand the real meaning of a Christian fundamentalist mm -hmm. yeah. with whatever it takes. So yeah. that's why... I believe it's much easier to go with the flow. Mm. 
and and just go with everybody today mm. yeah. uh you name it we we, we yeah. covered yesterday different aspects in society governments today are changing laws yeah. even as we speak here in denmark as we mm -hmm. mentioned in the previous presentation we we have a new law which has been um, this has been the, the common denominator mm. fun to counteract fundamentalism. Yes. Because today is being seen as something very dangerous, uh, very negative. Yeah. Uh, every single government today in the world, which I can think of, is trying to somehow counteract mm. not just uh, Islamic fundamentalism, yeah. but also within Christianity. Yeah, definitely, definitely the Bible is being attacked. The integrity of the Bible. Is it a relevant book? Mm. Is it fables? Is it a false book? Is it truth? Yeah. It's really being attacked. Yeah. And uh, you see that in the schools where maybe 50 years ago, 100 years ago at least, uh, the Bible was uh, presented in, in the schools as a book of education. Yeah, and that is under attack. And you know, we mentioned in our last presentation about the great controversy between Satan and between Christ and Satan. And there's a whole chapter, you know, Revelation chapter 11, where it's talking about Satan's attack on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's really been throughout the ages that he's wanted to destroy the Word of God ever since. Uh, God spoke to Eve in the beginning, you know, Satan put his attack against the Word of God and it's followed through the, the prophets. They were, you know, they spoke the words of God and the, the people mocked them. They didn't want to listen and, and through the apostles, through, through Christ, through the apostles and through the early church. And to our present day, there's still that attack on the Word of God. Yeah. And mm. I think that's a very uh, important point to make uh, as a Christian fundamentalist. Uh, today, I believe that people and Christians are, are many Christians today are afraid and scared to be labeled as a fundamentalist. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting how words uh, work. For example, the word fundamentalist, it's not a bad word, right? Mm -hmm. It's just talking about someone that follows fundamentals, yeah. uh, found fundamental values. And, and there's another word you had earlier, fanatic. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so sure about the English uh, derivation of this word, but uh, fanatic comes from the Latin word, and phantom in Latin means uh, either temple or altar. I think it means temple, but I'm not 100% sure. And fanaticus was the one that would go to the altar or the temple to worship. So mm -hmm. the, the word fanaticus was simply a worshiper, one who was devoted to worshiping. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see how that word fanatic, it has a, a bad... Um, uh, connotation, connotation in our society today, and and we get also the same word in, in Danish or English, fans, mm. you know, people that go watch the football, mm -hmm. and they some take off their shirt when it's below mm. zero, you know, cold, or paint their paint their mm. stomachs or their faces and get drunk, and yeah. and, and that's normal. That, that's a very interesting uh, uh, connection <laughs> you're making because when it comes to football, it's okay to be a fanatic for football. Yeah. But when it comes to uh, any religion, and especially now Christianity, yeah. that, that is being seen as something very dangerous for yeah. uh, for society. It's going too far. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that's a uh, that's an important point. Um, at this point in time, I'm asking the question, and and maybe we're going to answer that question over uh, this study uh, as well. Would Jesus be labeled as a Christian? I have it here on this question on this slide. Would Jesus be labeled as a Christian fundamentalist if he would be among us today? Uh, th this is a question that every Christian, I believe, should ask himself or herself. Would Jesus be labeled as a Christian fundamentalist? And, and I know it's a little bit of a tricky question. Yeah. Uh, and one of the reasons is that because Jesus said about himself that I'm the, basically, he's the rock. Yeah. He's the foundation. Yeah, yes. So, by definition, he is the fundamental, yeah. fundamentalism. Yes. Uh, if I may say so. Definitely. Um, yes, I mean, you know, I wouldn't maybe use the word Christian fundamentalist because I think a Christian is a Christian. Uh, a Christian is a Christian, so every Christian is actually a fundamentalist yeah. in the true sense of the meaning. Yeah. But uh, obviously, uh, you know, Jesus, if he were here today, 
you know, 2,000 years ago, he lived three and a half years yeah. in his official work as a minister. Of course, he was ministering when he was bef before he was 30 years of age his whole life, but his official ministry was three and a half years. And, you know, if he were alive today, I don't even know if he would live that long mm. <laughs> because he wouldn't be accepted in society. Anyway, his true teachings, yeah. he would be definitely uh, classified as an extremist, yeah. a fanatic, a yeah. fundamentalist, and yeah. dangerous to society. And yeah. Um, I have a short video that I would like to, uh, to show um, in this conversation, in this uh, international, let's call it international approach, which we also discussed in the last presentation, uh, that is being aimed against fundamentalism as, as a whole, uh, and this label that has been applied to every single group that you may think of today, that, that doesn't, doesn't go by, by the, let's say, the mainstream today. Um, but especially, um, I would like to address the focus that, that Pope Francis has against any kind of fundamentalism, and especially Protestant fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I've been following a little bit, uh, quite a lot, actually, his, his uh, statements over the time. And almost every time he speaks in public, that's quite interesting to notice that yeah. he's addressing Christian fundamentalism. Also mm -hmm. within uh, the Catholic uh, institution, but also in the Protestant uh, community. So sure. uh, we, we'll have a short video here, about a couple of minutes, uh, where he's uh, making this statement again. We must be especially attentive to every type of fundamentalism, whether religious, or of any other kind. The contemporary world, with its open wounds, which affect so many of our brothers and sisters. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. Demands that we confront every form of polarization. Which, wow, which would divide it into these two camps. All right. Um, again, he's addressing the fundamentalism, and, and as we discussed in the previous presentation, uh, fundamentalism, Christian fundamentalism, is being always, in the last years, the last 20, 50 years or so, is being said more and more together with something negative. Yes. So, so, so the negative uh, ideology, everything almost which is being negative. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we saw one of the articles was referring to fundamentalist, uh, Christian fundamentalism yeah. are more dangerous than the Islamic State. Yeah. Um, that was a, a, a yes. university uh, teacher uh, stating that. And now Pope Francis is again, underlying the danger of funda any kind of fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when he's saying that, well, that goes for Christian fundamentalism as well, I, sure. I must say. And, and according to him, one of the things he's stating, it's, it's polarizing society. Yeah. It's, it's splitting society mm -hmm. in something good and bad, yeah. or two sides, yeah. and uh, brings division. Yeah. And he's a very strong promoter about unity, especially mm -hmm. religious unity, Christian yeah. unity. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, another strong aspect uh, yeah. to be talked about. Uh, is, is, isn't that quite interesting that there is so much focus today on this unity, on this bringing peace, and the ideology that has been induced today in the masses that Christian fundamentalism, it's against all of that. Mm -hmm. All which is good, peace, that's what they state. Yes. Christian fundamentalists are against peace mm -hmm. in, in, uh, on earth. Yeah. Christian fundamentalists in schools, they're promoting oppression, as, mm -hmm. as we stated before. Yeah. So um, I, we need to dare that. We need to question that. Mm -hmm. And I find very few Christians today that goes out in the public 
and defending the real fundamentally. Okay, because there is no doubt that there is the, the, the false one and, and the wrong one. Okay, we, we mentioned, uh, just to give an example, we mentioned a uh, previous presentation, yeah. the uh, Ku Klux Klan, yeah. which also claimed to be a uh, Christian. And, and, yeah. and they are labeled to be a Christian <laughs> fundamentalist. That, that's yeah. not our... Uh, yeah, I, w I would like to add a scripture here. I think it's a good time to do it. It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. And, you know, that's the chapter where Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And that was his, one of the crowning miracles that he did. And it really proved his divinity without a shadow of doubt. Mm. And uh, I just want to read a few verses here from John, chapter 11, starting with verse 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we, for this man doeth many miracles, that's referring to Jesus, the crowning miracle, the resurrection of Lazarus. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away our place and nation. And uh, the, it's interesting because the, the Jewish leaders here, the Pharisees, the council, the uh, Sanhedrin, they were afraid of the Romans that the Romans would come and mm. take away their uh, nation. And, uh, and they would rather follow the Romans than Jesus. Mm. And I think there's a parallel we can see today in our world. And then one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. So Caiaphas said we need to preserve our nation, and to do that we need to get rid of one person mm. that was causing the problems. He was a troublemaker, a threat for national security, and that was Jesus. And um, he said it was expedient. Uh, that means advantageous or good or necessary. To, to meet the goal. And then, verse 51, And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that he should also gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Mm. So the point I just wanted to mention here was that uh, Jesus was also seen as a problem and whatever the cost was, they needed to get him out of the way. And uh, this is what is happening. The Bible is seen as the problem, and those that are following literally the Scriptures are seen as the problem. Mm -hmm. And they need to be getting, yeah. gotten out of society. A very interesting angle indeed. Uh, there are many aspects to you that could be uh, discussed on, on this, but I, I, as, as we read the Bible, we, we saw that how the, uh, the Jewish people, they, they've lost the foundation. And, Definitely. And they follow their own way of thinking. Yeah. And uh, Jesus was there to, to, to bring them back on the foundation, but they rejected that. And, and you know, we must uh, credit, give credit where credit is due. The, the Jews, and the, the church at that day, they thought they were serving God. Mm but they had gotten away from the foundational mm. principles of the Word of God, yeah. the Old Testament. And that one principle was to accept the prophets. Mm. They were rejecting the prophets. And we have to give the churches today credit because they are also rejecting the Word of God. They're putting it aside. And this is giving room for this new movement condemning fundamentalism. Mm. Actually, all Protestant churches, all Christians in the world should be standing up and saying, stop mm. this we cannot accept. This, this is, is wrong. This is not us. Uh, but the churches are not doing no, that. No. They're just uh, yeah. sleeping or accepting it. Mm. They've, we've gotten so far away from the Word of God that yeah. I don't even think a lot of people even know, know what's mm. happening. And, and yeah, well, that could be said a lot about that. I have here on the next slide here five a major principles here of what is a biblical fundamentalist? What does it mean? And, and these principles... On, on slide 43, they were brought uh, up, as we discussed in the previous presentation, by, by these uh, Baptist yes. uh, denominations back in the 1920s sure. uh, to emphasize the importance of 
going back and staying on this foundation. And uh, if, if we bring up this uh, slide here, um, one of them is uh, the uh, inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible, the virgin birth of Christ, the belief that Christ died on the cross to pay for the sins of the world, the bodily resurrection of Christ, the historical reality of Christ's miracles, and more, and so on. Yeah, I'm just looking at those uh, that you read there. The church in Christ's day, they were rejecting Christ's miracles. Mm. Some of them didn't even believe in his mm. resurrection, that it could be possible. Mm. And then when he was resurrected, they, they still didn't mm. accept it. Mm. And so the church was rejecting these uh, mm. principles of the Bible. Yeah. And uh, it shouldn't surprise us really today that a lot of the church is doing that. And it's, it's mm. also important uh, because one of the questions that people outside of the Christian community, they say, why do we have so many? As we know today, mm. there are over 40,000 uh, registered Christian denominations yeah. uh, with different, more or less, major variation. Yeah. Uh, from the Seventh-day Adventist Church to the Baptist to the Pentecostal and so on, you can yeah. name it. But 42,000 denominations, which everybody claims to be building on the same holy book, which is, yeah. uh, which is this Bible here. And if we go back to just five of these principles, we can see that through all of these denominations, more or less, yeah. many of them, they're not, not just promoting, but they don't believe some of these mm. uh, fundamental yeah. beliefs that yeah. makes you a, a, a Christian. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it would be appropriate now to take a Bible verse, in, especially in re relation to the first principle there, the inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible. You know, <laughs> of course, um, if I accept the Bible, if we accept the Bible, then we have to believe what it says. Mm -hmm. I can't use a, a dictionary or a book of science to prove that the Bible is true. I have to depend upon the Word of God itself, the Bible itself, to, to present itself. And, you know, if, if I'm a Christian or if I believe in God, I, I can't uh, make up my own beliefs of what God is or who, who he is or what he's like. I have to believe on the Bible. But, but isn't that what a moderate Christian would say? Is that, well, I'm a Christian, I believe in the Bible, but yeah. there is always this but. I'm not yeah. a Christian fundamentalist because I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's read that verse mm -hmm. I'm thinking. That's Second Timothy 3.16. You probably know that one. And Second uh, Timothy 3.16, and, and uh, we'll even read verse 17 eventually. It says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh, not all writings. The, the Scripture is referring to the canon of Scripture. Mm -hmm. We know it today as the Old Testament and the New Testament. And... Uh, this is Paul writing to Timothy, and he says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. And that is saying from Genesis to Revelation, everything in this book has been inspired. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say some Scriptures. Mm -hmm. It says all. Mm -hmm. Not sometimes or in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And so all the, world, all the Scripture is given breathed by God or given through inspiration to the prophets, to the apostles. And then it says it's profitable. You know, we want to make a profit, right? Mm. That's a way to get, get uh, wealth. Mm. It's profitable for, it says four things, for doctrine, re for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And mm. I just want to explain those quickly and briefly. Doctrine, it means teaching. Mm. So the Bible is profitable for teaching, to teach us different things, how to live, what to do, and so forth. And it also says uh, for reproof. Mm. And uh, reproof, that is like I do something wrong, and then someone comes and tells me that I did that wrong. Mm. And uh, not all people like to be reproved mm. because it, it reveals our sins or what we've done wrong or what we need to do differently. Mm. Yeah. And so the Bible reproves us, reprove, reproves us of sin. And it says also for correction. Mm. Correction is something that I'm 
needing to do differently or better. So that's very similar to reproof. And instruction in righteousness. So the Bible tells us how to live, live a righteous life. So most people, you know, our, our carnal nature it goes against reproof, it goes against correction, it goes against righteous living. And I believe that's part of the reason why some people say, well, you know, that, that, that I can take or accept, but not that. And so we're choosing. Mm. So the key mm. word here is authority. Yeah. Is, is the Bible mm. the final authority yeah. in my Christian life? Yeah. Or do I add either my own opinion yes. or somebody else? Yeah. And, and I just want to read the next verse, mm. uh, 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm. So here we hear other words that we don't want to hear. Works mm. and perfection. So the word of God, it's to make us complete, mm. mature, or prepared for eternal life. And for that particular reason as well, that makes it impossible for people outside, for non-believers, to understand what a Christian fundamental is. Yes, and it's easier to jump on the wagon, believing as the masses do, as everybody else. Yeah. that's a bad person. We need to avoid that person. We need yeah. to put that person in jail pretty soon because they're going to destroy our our society. Yeah, I have here on the next slide here uh, number forty-four is that again a biblical fundamentalist is a relationship. I have this statement saying that a relationship to the Word of God, which fully acknowledges and joyfully submits to the absolute authority of the Scripture over all that we believe and practice. Again, faith and works. Yes. Believe and practice. Mm -hmm. Going backwards a little bit, absolute authority of yeah. the Scripture. Yes. As a Christian, you cannot believe that God has spoken through this word, but I take my own authority to make my own interpretation mm -hmm. and say, in this place, I don't think it's, Literal, I think it's more mm -hmm. like this and so and so yes. according to whatever mood I have or a society yeah. or some kind of uh, academic. Yes. The next slide here, I have another statement about what is a biblical fundamentalist. Uh, an inerrant, infallible, inspired Bible, it's useless if it is, carries no authority over our belief. And practice yes what we believe and what we do uh, is that a far-off statement to, to make no that's uh, of course that's very biblical statement mm -hmm. it's true you know we've talked earlier about this great controversy between Christ and Satan mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Satan will come as a wolf in sheep's clothing and to his advantage, he will mix truth with error. Truth mixed with error is not truth. Truth standing alone is truth. And his uh, modus operandi, so, uh, so to speak, is mixing a little bit of error with amount of truth. Mm. And that seems to be what the majority is accepting in Christianity yeah. today. So if you accept only truth, you're being on the outside or in the minority. And, and uh, this is no authority. You know, when Jesus came, they recognized, the, the people, the, the common people, when Jesus came, they recognized his authority when he spake. Mm. Because he was not mixing the, the error with the truth. He was speaking the truth straight. And he also spoke the truth in love important. We mentioned in our last presentation that, that some of the statements that were made from was the, the Archbishop of uh, Aleppo in Syria, the Catholic Archbishop, he was going against the fundamentalists, especially yeah. uh, within Islam. At the same time, almost within the same sentence, he's mentioning, but we have a fundamental right yeah. to fight for religious freedom. Yeah. So a fundamental right of religious freedom, do we find that in the Bible? From the very beginning, when the Bible says that God created, yeah. which is also today is being seen as a symbolic. Yes. Yeah. And as we read yesterday, we find people today that will coin you 
as a fundamentalist, if you believe, even within the yes. Christian churches, if you believe in the uh, literal creation. Yes, that's right. So the Bible, it's very clear. Now I'm answering my own question, but yeah. the, the Bible, it's, it's very, uh, very clear on that point that you cannot take, as you, as you mentioned uh, before, you, you cannot take the literal inspiration mm. from the Bible out of the context. Yeah. And place it on another platform you, where you will have a majority voting yeah. of what is right and wrong, yeah. then that's not a Bible. That's no. not. And, and no. just to make a point, again, we are not here to defend some kind of a, of a special belief in the yeah. Bible. We are here to defend the right to believe in the Bible as yeah. it is, as the inspired uh, word of God. Yes, uh, the, 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 the devil has many different ways to make the Bible, to render the Bible useless. And this is one that we're exposing or talking about now. And it is more effective because it's coming from scholars, quote unquote scholars, that say they're Christians mm. and they're just uh, tearing the Bible in pieces, mm. just burning it, throwing it out. Mm. And unfortunately, that's what we have in our own seminaries today. You know, when you study uh, the Bible, you use this called uh, higher criticism. So you put yourself higher than the Bible. Mm. Your authority is higher, is higher than, than the, Bible. the Bible. And it, it makes the Bible useless, mm. right? But at the same time, it makes the devil's attack more effective because here you have theologians, uh, professors, profaning to be, pro professing to be Christians, professing to believe in the Word of God while they're actually tearing the Bible down. And, and that's also very interesting, and I would really uh, ask all the Christians around the world to look at this situation because uh, there are many theologians out there, there are many academics, and one of them they say so, another one says yes. so, and yeah. they're forming groups, some of them they're almost getting into some kind of a cult yeah. uh, denomination, but which one would you believe? Mm. You yeah. Know? That's, that's the question. Yeah. And another one is that how come that the Bible has been over the centuries, and especially at this point in time in history, and there is an answer for that, yeah. has been the most attacked yeah. book. There is no other book yeah. that I can think of yeah. that has been so attacked as the Bible. Yeah. And you find a lot of garbage. There are a lot of books out there which are basically garbage. Yeah. Uh, twisted fantasies and so on. But, yeah. but they're not attacked. On the no. contrary, you will find them as the bestsellers, yeah. Yeah. And, and being sold in millions and, and promoted it, in uh, in this newspaper and and that yeah. TV show. Yeah. But a Bible is being attacked yeah. over and over and over again. And if you hold to the values of the Bible, you will be censored mm. or defined as having hate speech. Yeah. Where and, uh, in these other books you're talking about, you can say all types of perverse, evil yeah. things, and that's fine. Mm. Yeah. And we have to just go back 500, five to 6,000 years ago, where yeah. the Bible was forbidden. You could be burned yeah. to the stake. If you yes. own the Bible, mm. if you defer it from, yeah. uh, from, from the church. You know, just coming back to your question there earlier about religious liberty and it's interesting to study the word foundations in the Bible. I haven't done it uh, thoroughly, but uh, God is asking questions to human beings and saying, where were you when I laid the foundations mm. for the world, the foundations for the earth? So the very earth itself is laid on foundations, and those foundations are God's laws, mm. the law of gravity, mm. the, the law where the sun is there and the earth is here and they have their set special circuits so they don't collide or mm. the distance between them exactly. is remaining the same. So God is, uh, he's ruled by fo foundational beliefs, the, the Bible. And that's also a very interesting point because everybody today, more or less, they're very willing to accept that there are fundamentals, as you yes. mentioned, yeah. fundamental law of physics. Well, it's hard to deny it, isn't it? <laughs> Who would do that? Yeah. <laughs> and there are fundamental law of mathematics. Yes. And yeah. almost every fundamental laws within chemistry, and so yeah. on and so on. We could talk yeah. uh, for hours about and, it. And think of all the blessings that gives us in life, yeah. you know? But when it comes mm. to the fundamental laws, God fundamental laws, yeah. when it comes to the fundamental moral principles in the Bibles, yeah. then almost everybody is attacking it. Yeah. 
And yeah. why? Why is that so? Yes. When God gave us Ten mm. Commandments as a fundamental basis of our society, yeah. not to kill each other, not to steal from yeah. each other, not to betray, and so on and yeah. so on, people are attacking even within uh, the yeah. Christian uh, community. Sure. Another statement I have here uh, is on the next slide here, number 46. Our relationship with our fellow men is the resulting outcome of the kind of relationship we have with the Word of God. Mm, that's interesting, yeah. And isn't that so how we see that in society today? Yeah, and yeah. especially in this part of the liberal progressive society, which are attacking so much the Christian fundamental belief, yeah. which is love one another. Yeah. At the same time, they say, well, we would like to have peace. And the only way, as we saw, mm. the only way, as Pope Francis stated that yeah. many times, as many other leaders, yeah. not just political leaders, any other religious, is to get rid of these fundamentalists, yeah. which y are promoting yeah. the very fundamental to create peace. Yeah. Isn't that a paradox? Mm. I, I mean, wh why yeah. aren't people uh, mm. so, so much awake to, to see that? Yeah, I mean, you know, just looking at history, John the Baptist, he came and was a preacher of righteousness, and he was seen as a threat to the king and, and to the, the church, and therefore he was uh, beheaded. Mm. The same happened with Jesus, right? But it, it didn't really change. It didn't give them more peace. Mm. Then, you know, then the conscience was yeah. bothering them that they had done those things. So the, the problem is not uh, what other people is doing. It's, you know, what I'm doing mm. with my heart. Exactly. And that's what the statement is saying here. The resulting outcome of the kind of relationship we have with God, this is how we will treat yeah. our fellow human beings on, Definitely. on this planet. Definitely, yes. So the Christian God, the only real God, which mm. is promoting peace, which is promoting love, yeah. first of all to His Word and God, and then to our fellow hu human beings. Yeah. That's that's a main principle in a fundamental Christian uh, yeah. belief. Definitely. Another statement I have here on the next slide, uh, number forty-seven. A fundamentalist, a Christian fundamentalist, takes seriously the clear command to love his brethren, and to promote biblical unity and arm harmony with those who believe and obey fundamental truth of Scripture. Mm. Yes. So again, it's, it's, it's not just repeating itself, it's just underlying, it's just emphasizing yeah. over and over again that the fundamental principle of the Bible is to take it seriously. Yeah. Take serious the command to love mm -hmm. each other, our yeah. brethren, and with whatever implication that yeah. is. Whatever implication, as Jesus said, you, you will probably remember the yeah. text, what is the, the, the extreme, you know, the extreme sign of love that you can show another person? Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, so I think so it's to lay down your life. Lay down your life, mm. you know, in love for your yeah. dear one or for another person. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there has been thousands of people over time mm. that have done that. And, and yeah. that's, that's also a fundamental belief. Yeah, and I just want to, about this quote here, to love his brethren, and, you know, we can extend or include neighbors mm. in that, you know, to love our neighbors. Yeah. It's, it's if, not just talking about our own family. It, well, and not our own religious mm. family either. It's talking about all religious mm. communities. And uh, I like the way you wrote that there, biblical biblical unity and uh you know since your i am against uh, this what we call ecumenical movement some people might think we're against unity but we just need to say that those are two different species mm -hmm. right two different animals ecumenism is not built upon the scriptures as the foundation while the biblical unity is built mm -hmm. upon the word of god with the foundation yeah so unity as in in this context, that doesn't mean necessarily a good thing. Because you can actually be united with somebody yes. in a bad thing. You can, yeah. you can unite with somebody to rob a ba bank. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't make unity a good thing, no. always. No. So it has to be built on a foundation, which in this case, we believe the only mm. true foundation is the uh, Bible, is the Bible as, yeah. as it has been proved uh, over time. And, and you know, <coughs> it, it won't even be difficult really to do that because the Holy Spirit is working in the realms of true unity, and, and He will lead people together. Mm. He will bring the people of God 
together and give them love for one another. Mm. That's not a natural principle in the human heart, but uh, you know, when people are following the, the law of God and filled with the Holy Spirit, He will lead those people together and there will be Christian unity in the church. So, so actually what you're into a little bit, that more surveillance will not bring us peace and more love, because that, that's mm-hmm. what we have in society today. We have, even within the masses, people are demanding more surveillance. Yeah. I think you mentioned about the situation going on in Sweden, yeah. uh, where the crime rate is it's very high, in, especially in one of the cities, yeah. and people are demanding more surveillance yeah. to bring some kind of a peace, some kind of understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm not attacking you know, this, this kind of yeah. view. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because you have to go to the root of the yeah. problem. Yeah. Why do we have crimes? Yeah. You know, why are people mm. shooting each other? Yeah. And uh, just because yeah. I put a camera on you, would that make you a more loving mm. person? It would change my behavior, but it wouldn't change my heart, would it? And you know, it's interesting you mentioned that again. With the more surveillance, it's also taking away the weapons, restricting the, the purchase of weapons. Mm. And uh, so we're just going on the surface, the outside. And it, it's so interesting, Michael, because the problem is, is because we're throwing away the fundamental beliefs. The law of God, that's where we find true love. And if I have the law of God written in my heart, I would never want to kill another human being. Well, I need to use that, that word because uh, throwing away, as you said before, the principle, the foundation of the Bible, what does it leave in society today? Right. It's, it's not yeah. just emptiness. Yeah. What do we see in society today? We see chaos. Yeah. We see everybody running toward either one entity, either would say United Nations. Some yeah. people believe today, well, maybe Pope Francis. He's the man. Yeah. We've heard that. Yeah. He's the man to bring peace on earth. Yeah. And even the Bible speaks about that at some yeah. point, but that's another subject. Yeah. So throwing away the, the fundamental yeah. principle of the Bible, which has been attacked, as you mentioned before, by the enemy over thousands of yeah. years, that will bring about exactly yeah. the kind of society mm. that he would like to have from the very beginning. Yes. And yeah. this is what we see today. And yeah. then he's also promoting his so-called ideas and his solution. Yeah. That's his solution uh, today in society. Yeah. And, and instead of making people look at the root and the mm. cause of, uh, of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Another statement I have here on the next slide here is that, on slide 48, is it possible to show reverence for the Word of God and not insist on believing all that, is cle- uh, that the Word of God clearly teaches and obeying all that it clearly commands? Mm. Again, is it possible to show reverence for the Word of God, which is God? God, God has spoken. Mm. Yeah. You know, that's, that's yeah. it. You know, that's mm. the authority. God has spoken. Or would you take it over that and say, but I would like it this way. Yeah. I, because in today's mm. society, so and so and so, this is yeah. what we hear. Uh, yes. Many Christians uh, yeah, stating I, that. I would just like to read uh, from Deuteronomy. Chapter 8, the fifth book of the Bible, we can say. Mm. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. And in the last presentation, I quoted actually Jesus quoting this verse in the wilderness. When Jesus was uh, confronted with temptation, he always uh, remembered the word of God and made his life's decisions based upon the word of God. It was seen as a solution for the trials that he was in. and Now this is talking about um, the children of the wilderness 40 years, children of Israel in the wilderness 40 years. And it says, And he, that is God, humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, Mm. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of of the Lord doth man live. And the people there understood that taking the word of God lightly caused them uh, suffering. Mm. They were not allowed to enter into what was going to be called the promised land or the land that God had promised them. And here it says that 
every word that comes or proceeds out of the mouth of God, it allows us to live. Mm -hmm. And that's talking about the uh, eternal life. Mm -hmm. Those that have accepted the word of God and choose to pattern a life after, to follow that counsel, to love it, to cherish it, to do it, mm -hmm they will be rewarded with eternal life. Mm -hmm. And it's not the words of the word of God I choose, but it says that every word. Mm -hmm. But people would say, wasn't that being used, let's say, back in the slavery time? That, that some Christian used the mm -hmm. Bible and, uh, to promote slavery and to excuse slavery? Yeah. And even promoted that over the, the black population, United States yeah. and some other places in the world. Yes. Um, yeah. That that's a quite realistic question mm. we, we hear uh, now and then. Yeah. And some people might ask, well, didn't God promote killing in the Bible? Yeah. If you if you go through the yes. Old Testament. Yeah. And uh, we we do have some answers. That that's an that's another uh, yeah. another subject, another conversation. But, yes. But the short answer is is taking the Bible out of context. Yeah, taking the Bible, uh, twisting the mm. Word of God. Yeah, putting Not my own views exactly. into it and and my own agenda, yeah. my own politics. Yes, and, and uh, so on and so on. Yes. Another statement I have here is um, moving a little bit further. I want to uh, touch before we uh, finish this presentation is fundamentalism and culture, uh, because that that's another that's another aspect yeah. of of this war going on today. Yeah. Uh, we live in a society here where people are uh, using culture against uh, fundamentalism. And yes. uh, fundamentalism, as a, as a principle I have here on this slide, is, is not uh, a slide 49. It's not rooted or grounded in culture, nor is it defined by any external culture. It is rooted and grounded in the timeless truth of the Word of God. Mm. Amen. And I know that might come mm. as a shock for many, even Christian people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because we hear today, even today, we need to we need to adapt, and modernize. That, that's that's yeah. the word. You Go know? with the flow. Uh, we're not in the 1800s here. Yeah, we, we are in yeah. 2017 now. Yeah, and and uh, time has changed. You know, yeah. people are changing, behaviors yeah. are changing. So we need to adapt. That mm. we need to have a more purpose driven. I'm using a term which is very. Yeah. Uh, used in, in uh, some charismatic movements, yes. uh, purpose-driven mm -hmm. church, and yeah. so on and so on. But that's a fundamental principle that the Bible fundamentally means is not rooted or grounded uh, in culture. I just wanted to quote quickly uh, Isaiah 48. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand mm. forever. So that means that the word of God doesn't change. Well, and it's going to stand. You know, you can like in culture to the grass or the mm. flower. The cultures, they grow up like the grass, real nice and pretty green yeah. for a while, but then they, they disappear. Yeah. The flowers. So God's word abides or stands forever. The second principle I found here is about fundamentalism, is, uh, the, the biblical fundamentalism, what we're talking about here, a Christian fundamentalism, is not cultural in nature but does have a direct and hopefully profound effect on the life of the, of the believer in his cultural uh, environment. And I think this is point in uh, case in point. Uh, we hear, uh, again, one of the attacks which is being made against Bible, Bible fundamentalism, uh, Christian fundamentalists, is that uh, we are against modern culture. Mm, yeah. We are against modernizing society. Yeah which is always being used as yeah. something good, you know, yeah. modernizing, being yes. modern. Yeah. In many people's views, it's yeah. something good, and if you're against that, you're the bad guy. Yeah. So fundamentalism, Christian fundamentalism, is, is not cultural in nature. Mm. And uh, I found a term later is that it's a culture. All right. Okay. That's, yeah. that's actually an English term. I, I looked mm. it up. Yeah. I, I was thinking, does it, uh, mm. what does it mean? And it, yeah. it means that, there is no cult culture, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and even if, if the word of God, and mm -hmm. maybe some people doesn't know that that the Bible uh, writers they've been how many years to, to write the Bible? We're talking about over one thousand years yeah. over the course of one thousand six hundred approximately. One thousand six hundred approximately. Yeah. Uh, one thousand five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and uh, I think it's interesting that you're mentioning this because a lot of the people just ignore the Bible because they say it was for a certain culture mm -hmm. that had Abraham as their father, a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, that, the Bible was written for that culture, so it doesn't really apply. The Old Testament was for that culture, so it doesn't apply for us mm -hmm. today. I have it actually in the next slide here, uh, number three, slide uh, 51, the third principle here, fundamentalism and culture is not anti cultural, but because of its biblical worldview, uh, is a cultural. And um, a, a dictionary states that a cultural is without or irrespective of, of culture, customs, and, yeah. and habits. Mm. Uh, and again, that's, as you mentioned, a very uh, important point when we're talking about the Bible. Uh, the fourth principle here that we find on the slide 52 is that Biblical commands and principles should be applied to and sit in judgment on the culture, yeah. not vice versa. Yeah, and, and it's just beautiful, you know, how the Bible is written, that God uh, designed it that way, that it can fit into any culture, mm -hmm. you know. God designed the Bible to be a culture. Yeah, and you can have it in all the countries, all the tribes, all the people, languages of the world, and it, it fits there. And that's mm. also because God, in His wisdom, He foresaw yeah. the changing culture over history, over time, yeah. and today's society. As the Bible stated, it mm. will be like in Noah's days. Yeah. Today's society, mm. way of thinking, yeah. way of acting, way of behaving. Yeah. And just to, to make a point that we have today a uh, different view on the human sexualities. Oh, yes. Yeah. Within society, yeah. non-Christian societies yeah. or non-religious societies, yeah. people, and even within the Christian societies, yeah. even within our own denomination, yeah. we hear people now stating that the ver these verses yeah. in the Bible, we need to take them out yeah. or we just need to ignore them yes. because they do mm -hmm. not apply. And this is what I heard. This, they do not apply to our culture today and yeah. we need to adapt it and, and you know this attack michael has been going on for six thousand years god created man and woman in the beginning mm -hmm. the institution of marriage the family mm -hmm. the fundamental to a healthy society is the family a family that loves its mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. husband and wife and children that's the foundation of a healthy society and and uh it's been Satan's uh, attempt to get that out of the way 6,000 yeah. years, and it seems today he's uh, succeeded almost universally. Mm. But uh, if we put culture above the Bible in that, um, well, we almost are there today, right? I mean, they'll, they'll be they'll just to destroy yeah. the commandments. So, so the principle mm. is we need to judge the culture by the Bible, not vice versa. Yes. I think yes. That's, that's a fundamental Definitely. Uh, belief as, as a Christian. Uh, yes. The next one here, we have number five on slide 53. It's in matters where culture conforms to you and is compatible with the commands and principle of the Word of God, it should be acceptable to the believer. Yeah. And, and that's an that's obvious uh, statement. Yes. Uh, and we don't even have to, to, to talk about that yes. like, that much. Uh, the next one here, uh, I have it's, uh, it's number... Um, Seven on the next slide is that in matters uh, where the culture is neutral to the commands and principle of the Word of God, discernment should be exercised. Yeah. And of course, again, we find in different places around the world, different situation, a culture is, is neutral. Uh, you have more or less uh, a freedom to operate yeah. uh, within that realm mm -hmm. of, of uh, culture yes and and that's also important that you're mm -hmm. building your faith and mm -hmm. your behavior definitely on, on the word of god yes and <clears throat> these were some some very um important uh principles um j just before we finish uh, i just wanted to, to bring up some some of the bible verses which are pointing really straight to, to what mm. it does it yes. mean and the importance of 
foundational principle is taught very clear in the Bible. This is my mm -hmm. uh, our final statement in this presentation here. And on the next slide here, I have a, a verse from uh, Psalm uh, 11 uh, and verse uh, 3. Uh, if you please uh, read it. Yes. Uh we're missing a letter there yeah. in the word destroyed. It should be destroyed instead of destroyed there in the verse. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And uh, it's almost saying like the, the foundations are going to be destroyed or at least they're going to be attacked. Mm -hmm. So the righteous are dependent upon the foundations. And this is what we see today. This is why we're here. That's why we have this conversation here, yes. this uh, debate, because uh, we see a tremendous attack and almost uh, a strategic enforcement yes. of, of uh, some uh, many entities today in, in societies around the world to not just downsize, but to eliminate, yeah. eradicate uh, Christian uh, fundamentalism. Yeah. And, you know, actually the, we see the devil working here with all his agencies because the last message to the world is the revelation of the righteousness of Christ, his character. And so he's trying to confuse the righteous to take away the foundation so they don't know what to do so they cannot glorify Christ before the universe, before the world. Yeah. Another Bible verse I have here on the next slide is from Luke chapter 6. Uh, 47 to 49, mm. um, yes. if you care to read it. Yes, this is a very, uh, very good verse. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundations on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock. Mm. Yes, and, and the next slide continues on verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Yeah. So, so we have here um, straight relation to what it means to mm. build a house on a foundation, yes. have it on that foundation, and what it means to build a house, house without foundation. Yes. And no reasonable person on this planet will build a house without a foundation. I, I have a very hard time to believe that, that anybody mm. will, would build its own house uh, w w without a foundation. But again, yeah. when it comes mm. To, mm. to moral issues, yeah which are so important, are demanding yeah. for our behavior, yeah. people are attacking yeah. the foundation, oh, yes. which brings this. I would just like to illustrate this with an example in our time. You know, earthquakes come more and more frequently, we, frequently to the world now, and one finds the stronger the foundation to the houses, the less people are killed. Mm. Certain countries, the foundations are not as strong. The earthquake comes, kills hundreds, thousands. Same earthquake, same magnitude, kills maybe five, ten. So it's for our own best to, mm. to build on that foundation. Yeah. The earthquakes are coming, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Another verse I have here is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, 9 to 15. If you can please read it. Yes. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another man, excuse me, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And the next... Uh one, next slide. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. 
If any man's work abide, which he, sh which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So here we have a very strong relation to the salvation Definitely. of human being. Yeah. The salvation of human being depends on building on a foundation. Yeah. And there is only one foundation. Yeah. And if you take that away, you are actually taking away the salvation of, yeah. a, of a human being. Yes. So it brings me to, yeah. to it's, it's not just the idea, but the principle that this is, a, this is a question about life and death. Yeah. This is a life and death situation. Yeah, and I just want to tie these two verses together that we read. Here, Paul is saying Jesus Christ is the foundation. There is no other foundation. And mm. the previous verse we read in uh, Luke also in Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is the foundation, but he also talks about his word, his mm. sayings. So I cannot just say as a Christian, well, I'm just going to follow Jesus. I don't really care what the Bible says. Mm. It's all For, about Jesus. We have, we have yeah. a movement <laughs> yeah. that is promoting. It's all about not what he says. Yeah. So we cannot separate Jesus from his word. Mm. Right? The Bible is Jesus. Jesus is the Bible. They go together. So the wise man, the foundation is Jesus, and it's his teachings. It's the Holy Scriptures, mm -hmm. the Word of God. Yeah. Another verse here we have uh, from Matthew on the next slide, Matthew chapter 22, um, which is expressing, again, that real fundamentalist model model their life on Christ and strive to love God with their heart, soul, and mind and love their neighbor as thyself. Mm. That's, yeah. that's, and I, I'm sure that, that uh, one of the main reasons a lot of people today in non-Christian uh, societies, they do attack fundamentalists because they don't know. So one of the, the reasons is, I believe, is lack of information, lack yeah. of knowledge, mm -hmm. and we're here to inform. Because yeah. we're here to tell people that as the Christian fundamentalist, we love you. You know, yeah. that's, that's actually, we love you as our neighbor. Yeah. And we're not here to destroy anybody. No. We're not here to damage, to oppress, mm. and so yeah. on. What every kind of evil that, that uh, the media and all these entities are applying mm. to uh, a Christian. Well, you know, and I think we also need to ask uh, God's forgiveness mm. and other people's forgiveness as Christians because we have, in many cases, misrepresented who God is. Mm. And so part of this, uh, it's maybe not a lack of knowledge, but it's a, a prejudice or seeing things that are yeah. not in harmony with the true love of Christ, the true love of God. Based on misrepresentation of uh, what true love is and what a true Christian is. And yeah, Christians yeah. believing in the Bible moderately, mm. moderately, not following the true principles of the Word. Mm. And that's, that's mm. a second main reason why, why people are uh, maybe looking at, at Christian fundamentalism the way they, Definitely. Uh, they do today. Yes. Uh, that's exactly. Another text we have here... Um, I think people should, should read them for, for themselves, uh, which we have here. Yes, uh, we read 2 Timothy 3, read, 16 yes, and 17 uh, there. A fundamentalist believed that Bible was inspired by God. We call it the Word of God. If, if we, why call it the Word of God is my question. If we don't yeah. believe it's the Word of God. Mm, yeah. um, another one here on, on the next slide is uh, the statement that Jesus did die on the cross uh, yeah. in reality and rose on the third day, which yes. is, of course, a miracle. And it's yes. hard to accept for a non-believer, but that's, mm -hmm. a, uh, that's one of the fundamentals uh, of, of the Bible. And we also have, on the next slide here, we have some verses where, uh, some Bible verses where Jesus performed miracles. Uh, I think that's also important for people to, to read by themselves, especially Christians in every single yeah. uh, denomination. How can you believe in a God that eventually is going to save you if you're not able to believe that he was your creator? Yeah. If mm -hmm. you're not able to believe that he did rose from, from, from the grave. Yeah. If you're not able to believe that he did actually these uh, miracles mm -hmm. and are just merely fables. Yes. And, and people, the, some writers, they just try to kind of pop up the Bible history to make it more yeah. you know, gullible for, uh, for us. And... Uh, 
and many, many other more questions we could ask. But I would, mm -hmm. I would like to stop here um, and uh, point again uh, to the same question that, that we asked uh, before. Uh, would Jesus be labeled as a Christian fundamentalist if he would be among us today? And the other reason I'm asking that is because you and my, I, we are calling ourselves Christian. Yes. Ev everybody here in our audience and other Christians yes. around the world. Yeah. And if I'm a Christian, that does make me automatically, or does it, a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that would make me a fundamentalist yeah. because Christian, uh, Jesus, indeed, he was, uh, he was yeah. the fundamental. Yeah. element of, uh, of Christianity. Absolutely. And uh, I would just like to share a verse in closing. Also, uh, there was a young man that came to Jesus and he was rich. He was a ruler. He had a lot of wealth and he wanted to have eternal life. And Jesus said, if you want to have eternal life, that he should keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. So the commandments are the foundation, just summarizing again, of the, the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the Word of God. It's the foundation of the Christian experience, and mm -hmm. it's also uh, a, requ a requirement or a condition of eternal life. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was a, a fun fundamentalist in that sense, mm -hmm. and uh, he t teaches us uh, obedience to obey him because he loves us and we love him. Yeah. And he, that would be his message today exactly. for and us. I'd like to close with uh, our last slide here where the statement and conclusion is that what the Christian fundamentalists believe is the belief that in a loving God because he first loved us, yeah. as the Bible is stating, and therefore we need to share his love with other people. Yeah, that's So we can only say uh, amen to that. Amen, yeah. And uh, so God be with us. Amen. Thank you, Jay, for coming. Thank again. you.